Abtafit Sheikh Hussein is an elder. He's a born survivor, trained a long time ago in Cuba. He's weathered the turmoil of the last 14 years, from a ministry in the Siad Barre government to district commissioner under the RRA. He's now the interface between MSF and the elders. Hussein is an expert in clan protocol, and MSF is careful to consult him, especially on local recruitment. In Somalia, favoring one person or clan over another can be disastrous. The biggest uh, issue also in uh, regarding security is staff management. Huh? So, and you cannot go and you cannot say to someone, okay, you did this, you, you breached your duty and uh, you will be fired. Huh? So it can be a very tough issue. It can go until threat and until uh, death threats. Huh? So, to avoid this, we involve the community leaders, uh, the district commission, the health committee, that's, uh, to do a decision with them together. It's always a bit... You have to be very diplomatic, whatever you're talking about, all the time. It all takes hours. It's important to... I'm learning about diplomacy, because you constantly have to negotiate. Even the smallest things are negotiated. Bertrand Rossier, the Swiss field coordinator, is learning the hard way. He's been in Dinsor several months and has been supervising the construction of a new building for the hospital. He has to deal with a group of contractors representing the four Dinsa clans. It's no small task. Their prices are extortionate, their negotiations endless, but they in turn seem to be under pressure from their own clan members. In fact, one of the main sources of income are the roadblocks. The trucks go by and they collect taxes or when the cars go by. And for several months, there hasn't been much traffic passing through Dinsor, very few vehicles. And that means no income for the community, so they take what they can get. So all the construction work here has to be negotiated with contractors, who represent four or five hundred people from the community. So each clan is represented, and each job is negotiated with them on price and on the terms of the contract, and they can allocate the work within the community. So for them, it's an essential part of income. Chaque travail est négocié avec eux euh, au niveau du prix, au niveau du, du contrat, et ensuite eux ils redistribuent le travail euh, au niveau de la, la communauté. Donc pour eux c'est une source de revenus euh, essentielle. Somalia is the only country where MSF employs armed guards. Fatima Gudi, a Somali nurse from Kenya, has left her husband and children back at home to work with MSF for a year. She has to make her daily rounds of tuberculosis patients with Diko, a bodyguard. Although Fatima is from a different clan, she's been accepted by the people of Dinsor. That's not the case for TB patients. Oh, actually TB is a stigma here in Somali community. Even they don't come and say that they have TB or they might even deny they have TB. They believe in a lot of things because of fear of stigmatization. So it takes time for us to talk to these people, convince them that this patient has been investigated and he has TB. And TB is curable. If it's not treated, you can die for it. So it's not something very big. So. I think with that counselling we have managed to get a lot of patients. When we were starting the programme in September we had only up to December 17 patients and now we have 170 something, seven, around 180 patients now on the programme. It was the same with Western medicine. People preferred to consult a traditional healer first before going to hospital. Eduardo Cott, the Kenyan doctor who's been in Dinsor for a year, is still baffled by some practices. Ah, yes. It's actually a growth that has been going on slowly. So initially she was normal, uh, but then uh, the swelling developed, and I think they took to a traditional medicine man yeah. who initiated uh, this kind of treatment mm -hmm. and uh, their burn treatment. <laughs> Maya, I'm a height with the pump. The pump? Ah. 
This ban was uh, one month ago. See how she's doing in front. Why did they ban also the front of the chest? Yeah, they said, you know, since she get the form on the back, uh, just running about. They afraid that to get on the, the form on the also for the just. Oh, they last. fear that uh, yeah. the chest will also grow like uh, the yeah. back was uh, yeah. growing. That's so right. the ban in advance. Yeah. Yeah. The 15-year-old girl's yeah, spinal tuberculosis will be cured, but the swelling and the burn marks the pain will pain never disappear. Abdi Ame Kusan calls himself the official doctor of Dinso. He says burns are the work of pastoralist healers. He says he's unthreatened by the presence of MSF. He's a busy man. I don't have time. A few questions later, and he's more forthcoming. My way of treating is the way of modern treatment. It's not like the traditional way. It's the same as in hospitals. It's an operation, it's a treatment, it's a dressing. So it's the same as the modern doctors are doing. Abdi's reputation is such that this man came from Mogadishu especially to see him. They took me to the hospital in Shifo. They put metal in my leg and then I got infected. They operated again and put in more bits of metal. In the end, they couldn't cure me, so they advised me to have my leg cut off. They took me back to Nairobi. I came back here again. They found a bone that wasn't doing anything. Abdi pulled it out, and this is the bone. The patient still can't bend his leg, but he says he's cured. He needs no convincing about Abdi's skills. He says he'll keep the bones to show to the doctors back in Mogadishu. But what's really made Abdi's reputation is his lion. He bought it from a nomad when it was two months old. He calls it Barre after the dictator. Locals call him the Lion Man. He told us when the new government arrives, he'll sell his lion to a zoo. Back in the MSF compound, Volker and Bertrand are stuck in one of their endless discussions with the toughest contractors. Good afternoon. The others are glued to the radio for news. President Yusuf and his transitional parliament are rowing about when and where to move the government. Mogadishu, the old capital, is too dangerous. Nothing in Somalia? Nothing in Somalia. We were waiting to hear about Somalia, but nothing covered today. What are you expecting? We wanted to know about the government, the federal government. Oh. Everybody already wants to know the fate of the government, so everybody wants to know every day what's happening at least. In Dinso, the first wave of excitement over the new government has abated. Rumours circulate about President Yusuf's sympathies with the age-old foe, Ethiopia, of warlords gathering armies, of clan clashes in neighbouring villages. Dinso, traditionally neutral, is now pro-Yusuf. Its relative calm is under threat. Two clans, the Dabari and the Galedali, have started to buy technicals, the Somali term for an armed 4x4. Four four. The clans are thought to have up to 20 technicals each. Haidar Sidi Ibrahim of the Dabari clan lives right next door to the MSF compound and has three technicals in his courtyard. <laughs> 